It's year 1783. The new world is in its infancy. There's a lot to discover and a lot to be sold. Two companies are in battle for the fur trade. Who will win? Who will lose? Will the natives rise to power? Find out today on this fur trade adventure. There are two companies that rule the fur trade. The first being the HBC. Established in 1670, this trading company had a monopoly, a complete ownership over the market. The traders could only trade with them. The first owner and entrepreneur of the company was Prince Rupert. He took a huge risk getting this company, but it was worth it, since it is a million dollar company. The reason the HBC had such a monopoly is how they paid the traders. They paid them in tokens worth half a made beaver. Using these tokens, they could only be spent at the HBC for weapons, food, and other items. Outside of the HBC, they were worthless. Another company was the NWC, or Northwest Company. They were established in 1783, but were the first competitors of the HBC. Improved trading for the travelers, as they could sell to the highest bidder, and they also dealt directly with the natives. Even with this change, the country is still in a state of economic imperialism, which meant that it was controlled by another country simply for the other country's economic gain. This meant that the money the fur trade companies made went to investors in Britain and Fab. The voyager was a very important person in the fur trade. Powell could use great distance to transport goods. He was able to do 50 strokes a minute in Powell 14 hours a day. With the rivalry between the two companies, there was extreme competition. Both companies tried their hardest to get furs from the suppliers. Profits were cut, expenses lowered. Even the NWC intercepted furs before they could get to the HBC. Knowing the HBC couldn't survive without expansion, they started building trading posts around the interior as well. First, they built Cumberland House, established by Samuel Hearn in 1774. After a while, many trading posts were dotted around the interior of the country. The Aboriginal men and women were very important during the fur trade. They worked directly with the NWC or HBC, and their knowledge of the land could supply them from everything from food, clothing, to firewood. They would also be used as translators, which some traders need in order to communicate. Voyager brigades often needed a navigator. Aboriginal men and women would fulfill this role. They also made birch bark canoes, which were necessary to the trade, repair them when necessary, and also made pemmican, a portable nutritious food that Voyagers ate. With the fur trade booming, the HBC and NWC wanted to explore more of the continent for business and to get better understanding of the area. The HBC, for example, sent Henry Kelsey in 16. Henry Kelsey went on a two-year journey, encouraging natives to go to the York factory to trade their furs. He won quite an adventure as he made it all the way to modern day Saskatoon. HBC wasn't the only one sent to school. The NWC sent Alexander Mates. He worked at Fort Chippewa, which was located in northern Alberta. His boat was on the Lake of Aska, which gave traders access to slave peace and Alaska rivers. In 1789, Kelsey was ordered by the chief trader, Peter Pond, to go on an adventure all the way down the slave river to find a passage to the Pacific Ocean. So Mackenzie went, but he found a passage to the Arctic Ocean, not the Pacific. In late 1793, Mackenzie tried again. He brought better navigational equipment this time and ignored Pond's orders, and instead listened to the advice of his First Nations guide. He was able to find a path to the Pacific Ocean, but it was hard and a long path. Therefore, the trade route wasn't established at the time. Although some explored inland, others explored the seas. One of the most famous was James Cook sent by England. His books sold within days. He also cared about the welfare of his sailors. He gave them food for taking vitamin C to save them from scurvy. Cook took three major voyages between 1768 and 1779. In 1768, he circumnavigated the goal. He also explored Antarctica, the east coast of Australia, and New Zealand during his voyages. He landed in Nootka Sound in 1778. He traveled the Nootka North, or CR Pelts, one of Europe's most loved luxuries. Trade for these folks did stop in 1911, though, when the worldwide population of CRs was just below 1,000. Russians also wanted to explore the New World. Peter the Great, Tsar of Russia, wanted Russia to be a world power. Therefore, he sent Vitis Bering to explore the land east of Siberia and find an area that was suitable for colonization. He explored the North Pacific and what would be named Bering Strait. On a second expedition in 1741, he landed in Alaska to trade with the Aleut people. He brought back some sea otter pelts. But sadly, he died on the return journey. Here's a little culinary fact for your cooks out there. James Cook was cooked. In 1779 on Hawaii, he was struck down and then eaten shortly after. Kind of funny seeing his last name is Cook. One of the things the Europeans bring to America was rum. Now, rum would be used as hearts, but they gave them to the natives who were new to rum. They became very intoxicated and they used this to their advantage while trading. When the fur traders brought furs to the trade boat, they would often carry very heavy packages. So heavy that they would often shorten their height by a couple inches by the end of it all. And that's my adventure. Thanks for listening.
took some time, especially since Folk Story 3 didn't work on my computer at home. But, you know, I got it done. So, have a good day. Hope you enjoyed it. Goodbye.